हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू इंजीनियर्स एकेडमी काइंडली सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल इफ़ यू हैवेंट सब्सक्राइब इट येट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम चैप्टर थर्टीन द प्रॉब्लम सेज दैट द स्प्रिंग हेल्ड फॉलोअर ए बी हैज अ मास ऑफ पॉइंट फाइव के जी एंड मूव्स बैक एंड फोर्थ एज इट्स एंड रोल्स ऑन द कंट्रोल सर्फेस ऑफ द केम वेयर द रेडियस ऑफ द केम इज पॉइंट वन फाइव मीटर्स and the displacement or the movement of this uh, a the spring held cylinder is represented by this z as a function of theta which is equal to 0.02 cos of 2 theta in meters so it is said that if the cam is rotating at a constant rate of 30 radian per second determine the force component of z at the end a of the follower when theta is equal to 30 degrees The spring is uncompressed when theta equals to ninety degrees. Neglect friction at the bearing C. So we have to determine the force applied by the cam on this cylinder at this particular point A. So if we consider the free body diagram of this cylinder A, let's say that we have that cylinder A. So we will have. Uh, the force applied by the cam on this cylinder in this direction we will have that force which will be acting like this so this is f z and here we have that spring and that spring will be compressed so if this spring is compressed so it will apply the force in the opposite direction and that spring force will be acting in this direction and let's say that the spring force is represented by f of s and as we can see that only uh, this mechanism this cylinder is moving in the z direction that is uh, parallel to the z axis so we can define our z axis here if i define my z axis so that is let's say that this is my positive z direction so first we will find the spring force so the spring force is as we know that it is always equal to k times the change in length let's say and the change in length is always equal to the stretch length let's say this is the stretch length minus the original length so as the moment of this cylinder is defined by this z equals to 0.02 cos of theta so let's say if i want to find the original length of the spring so in the problem statement it is said that the spring is uncompressed so the uncompressed length is the original length so that happens when theta is equal to 90 degrees so as we know that z is equal to 0.0 let me write that the z is equal to 0.02 cos of 2 theta so if we find this z when theta is equal to 90 degrees then that will be the original length of the spring or the unstretched length of the spring so let me write this is 0.02 cos of 2 into 90 so this becomes 180 and cos of 180 is minus so from this i can write that the original length of the spring or the unstretched length of the spring is minus 0.02 meters so now what does this mean it means that if if this is my origin let's say at this particular point z is equal to 0 so now when when theta equals to 90 degrees the this point a or the cylinder or the center of the cylinder will be at a distance of uh, 0.02 in the negative direction this is our positive z direction so this cylinder will be somewhere here initially it is here and when theta is equal to 90 degrees it will be at a distance of 0.02 but in the negative direction similarly the stretch length if you want to find the stretch length so the since we are considering we want to find fz when theta is equal to 30 degrees so we will find the length when theta is equal to 30 degrees so that will be the stretch length so let's say if i write that when theta is equal to 30 degrees that will be equal to 0.02 cos of 2 theta so 2 times 30 so this will give us the stretch length of the spring when theta is in when theta is equal to 30 degrees So this is 0.02 cos of 60. 2 into 30 is 60. So this gives me 0.01, 0.01 meters. 
So now when the spring is unstretched, it is located somewhere here that is in 0 0.02 in the negative sense from z equals to 0. And when it is stretched, then the spring will be or this end A will be at a distance of 0 0.01 from this origin in the positive direction. So now the change in length is the, we can write that change in length is the stretch length minus the unstretched length or we can say that the original length of the spring. So this is 0 0.01 is the stretch length minus the unstretched length which is minus 0 0.02. So the change in length is 0 0.03. This will become positive so we will write that this is 0 0.03. 0, 0.03 meters. So now we can find the spring force that is the spring force is Fs, K is given that is 1000 Newton per meter. So I will write 1000 into 0 0.03. So 1000 into 0 0.03 will give us 30 Newtons. 1000 into 0 0.03 gives us 30 Newtons. So the spring force when theta equals to 30 degrees is 30 Newtons. So that is the spring force. Now if I apply the equation of motions, that is if I apply the summation of forces along the z-axis is equals to mAz, so then the if this is our positive z direction, so fz is acting in the positive direction, so I will write plus fz minus fs, fs is acting in the negative z and fs is 30. And this is equal to the mass, mass is 0.5 and Az or we know that Az is the, the double derivative of z with respect to time. So we can say that this is z double dot. So now we need to find z double dot z is given as a function of theta. So we have to uh, take the derivative of this z with respect to theta with respect to time two times, right? So this is 0 0.02 cos of 2 theta. So I need to take the derivative of this z with respect to time. So the first derivative will be z dot. So if I take the derivative of this, so this will be 0 0.02 and the derivative of cos is minus sine of 2 theta and then we will take the derivative of the angle. So the derivative of the angle is 2 theta dot with respect to time. So this z dot is equal to this will become minus 0 0.04. 0 0.02 into 2 is 0 0.04 theta dot sine of 2 theta. Similarly, we need to take one another derivative with respect to time. So that will become z double dot and this will be minus 0 0.04. And now we need to consider the product rule. So I will write theta dot and the derivative of sine of 2 theta is cos of 2 theta. And then the derivative of the angle is 2 theta dot and then I will write plus and then sine of 2 theta and then the derivative of this theta dot so it will become theta dot square. So this is we can write it as minus 0 0.04 and this will become 2 theta dot this will become square theta, theta dot into theta dot so this is theta dot square cos of 2 theta plus theta dot square sine of 2 theta. Now as we know that this game is rotating with a constant uh, angular velocity of theta dot so this means that uh, the acceleration in the angular direction is 0. So if we take one another derivative of this theta dot so theta double dot will become 0. Here when we take the derivative of theta dot so this will become theta double dot this is not theta dot square this is theta double dot remember. So this is sine of 2 theta. So this will become 0 when theta double dot is 0. So we are left with minus 0 0.04 into 2 theta dot square cos of 2 theta. Now we can find that double dot if I put theta value and theta dot value in this equation. So this is minus 0 0.04 2 and theta dot is given which is 30 radian per second. So this will become 30 square cos of and we need to put theta equals to 30 degrees since we want to find the fz when theta equals to 30. So this will become 
2 into 30. So z double dot is minus 0 0.04 into 2 into 30 square cos of 60. 2 into 30 is 60. So this gives us minus 36. So z double dot is minus 36 meter per second square. Now in this equation, I can write that f z is equal to, if I bring this to the other side equation, so we will have 0 0.5 z double dot plus 30 and now we know z double dot which is minus 36. So from this we can find fz the force which the cam applies on the cylinder. So this is 0 0.5 into minus 36 plus 30. So this gives me the cam force on the cylinder equals to 12 Newton. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Kindly subscribe my channel if it helps in your learning. Also like this video if you people want me to solve such more problems from Hibbler Dynamics.